All right. Let's uh, let's talk about electric fields and their strength. Okay, so we have looked at testing electric fields with a positive test charge, and they are always tested with a positive test charge, and therefore you get field lines emanating out of positive charges and into negative charges. And you can kind of construct all of the interesting interactions of different um, positive and negative uh, charge spaces just by imagining what would happen if I were to place my positive test charge in there, okay? Um, <clears throat> and we've also sort of basically looked and have, a, have sort of an understanding that if you move outward, right, from your central charge, you know, if this is R, 2R, 3R, 4R, in 3D space, you know, the area that this charge has to pass through is 4 pi R squared, okay? And you get 4 pi 2R squared, 4 pi 3R squared, whoops, you know, and so on, and that the what am I doing here? <laughs> that the um, you know field lines are are piercing through these spheres as you move out from your central um, charge amount, and if we say R is one, I mean you can see that the area that this charge has to pass through increases kind of at a square to distance. So what that means is the same amount of field has to pass through areas that are 1, then 4, then 9, then 16, and so on. So we get this kind of relationship. The field strength, based on field lines passing through um, invisible spheres, often called flux, is proportional to 1 over r squared. And this is your classic physics uh, inverse square relationship, which applies not only to things like charge fields, or um, charge force fields, but also to gravity fields, gravitational fields, to light, to sound, and so on. Anything that diminishes in three-dimensional space uh, from which, which behaves as a point source, okay? Um, so we want to know then, how do we talk about field strength? Before we do, we're going to do a little recall about gravity. Because there's a, there's a tie-in here. Although the fields are not maybe necessarily related, the behavior of the fields is the same. So if we're talking about Earth, okay, we talk about Earth's gravitational field kind of like this. We say how many newtons of force do we get per kilogram? Okay, so if I have a, you know, if I have a mass here, you know, weighed in kilograms or measured in kilograms, a mass measured in kilograms, I can tell the gravitational field strength of Earth based on how many newtons of force I get there, I get from it. And if I went to a different planet or like to the moon, say, which is much smaller, and I took this same mass there, I would find that the gravitational field strength on the moon is lower because I get less newtons for every kilogram. So we could say that we measure gravity fields in the unit newtons per kilogram. Okay? Can you tell me, for Earth anyway, what is the gravitational field strength? How many newtons do we get for every kilogram of mass near the surface of the Earth? Well, we should be able to figure that out, right? If the force of gravity is equal to m times the acceleration due to gravity, there's my mass, 1 kg, times g, 9.8. So I get 9.8 newtons for every kilogram of mass. Well, that's kind of interesting. Have we seen that number before? Yes, we have. Let's examine that. That's the acceleration due to gravity on Earth, but it's also the gravitational field strength. 
right? So it's the acceleration due to gravity and it's the gravitational field strength. But why should this be, sh why, why should this be so? If I look at the Newton, the Newton is made up of these units. The kilogram meter per second squared, right? That's what a Newton is. So if I look back at this formula here, and then I'm multiplying that by the inverse of kilograms, because I'm saying we get this many Newtons per kilogram. Well, if I have a multiply by kilogram, and then multiply by the inverse of kilogram, ah, I get my units in terms of meters per second squared. So it turns out that you can write this like that. And this is mostly what we do. We usually just see this, 9.8 meters per second squared. But technically, I like to think about it in terms of field strength, sometimes when it suits me, as newtons per kilogram. And you'll see why I like to do this in a minute, okay? So again, just to reiterate, on the surface of Earth, the field strength is 9.8 newtons for every kilogram. If I put two kilograms, right, 2 times 9.8, I would get whatever that is, like 18.9 or whatever it works out to be, or 19.8, sorry, mental math's hard, okay? And then if I go to the, go to the moon, I get about 1.6 newtons per kilogram, right? I get about 1.6 newtons, about 1.6 what I would on Earth. So the moon's gravitational field strength is about 1.6. When, we when we were talking about gravity, we usually just stuck with accelerations, but now that we're going to move into electricity, I think it's useful to realize that what we were really saying is that the gravitational field strength is how many newtons I get for every kilogram of mass I bring in there. Okay? And I want to make like a correlation between these two, these two ideas. So in gravity, the important unit Is, is the mass unit, is mass, which we measure in kgs. And therefore, fields, g fields, I should say, gravitational fields, are measured in terms of their strength as how many newtons of force, how many newtons of pulling force that field can give me for every kilogram of mass that I have. Okay? Now let's talk about electric fields. In electric fields, or in electricity if you want, the important unit is what? The important concept is what? It's not mass, it's... Yeah, it's charge. Charge, which we said the other day is measured in, in coulombs, this idea of coulombs. Um, now, what's a, kil what's, what's, a, what's a coulomb? A coulomb is kind of like just how much charge there is there. It's sort of like using the liter to measure an amount of water. The coulomb measures an amount of charge, and the kilogram measures an amount of mass, and so on down the line. Okay. Um, now, the coulomb is not a base SI unit. It's actually a derived unit, which is the amount of charge... Um, delivered when a one amp current runs for one second, that's one coulomb of charge delivered. But it's much more useful, seeing as how we're going to measure electric fields in terms of, you know, what their effect is on a coulomb of charge, okay, to just think in terms of this as the base unit for now, okay. So let's say we have an amount of charge sitting here, we'll make it negative, okay, and so what we know is then that we have a field here. And we could bring some little charge in here. Let's call it a 0 0.05 Coulomb test charge. Okay? And I could put it like here. Okay? Can I use this to measure the field strength? Actually, that's silly. I'm, gonna get, I'm just going to make it a 1 Coulomb charge. Why add extra confusion? Let's say I bring a one, a one coulomb charge, and I place it right here. Okay, would we expect that a force would exist between this amount of charge here, which I don't actually know what it is, and this test here? Would there be some kind of interaction? Absolutely, right? We would expect that a force would exist in this direction, and we're going to call that the Fe. 
the electric force. Okay? Now, how much electric force we have is based on how strong this field is. Right? So let's just write that down. Fe, electric force, is based on how strong the field is. I'm going to use this symbol for, for field. It's not actually technically the correct one, but it's the one that's shown on your formula sheet. So I'm going to use it. It's this funny curly E. Really, it technically should just be this. But on your formula sheet, it's written as this. And really, I've been meaning to change that. And I'm not sure why it ended up like that to begin with. Um, this, is a, this is a symbol for something different, flux density and whatever. It doesn't really matter that much. Um, <clears throat> so anyway, Fe is based on how strong the field is. And the field is measured in, 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 in or the symbol is in E. But I want to know what units you suspect it would be measured in. Remember, the electric or the gravitational field strength was measured in terms of newtons per kilogram. What do you think the unit for this is going to be electric field strength? So one thing is it's going to have to have a force component, right? Because we're talking about how much force you know there is going to be there. So it's got to be newtons per something, but it's not going to be per mass. It's going to be per per charge, right, per coulomb. So newtons per coulomb. Now the unit for charge, the symbol for charge is Q. Do you remember that from grade 9? Q this is the symbol for charge. Okay. And its unit of measurement is the coulomb. Okay. People are always like, why can't we just put a C there? Um, it's kind of like how the unit for velocity is meters per second, right? The unit for acceleration is meters per second squared, right? We don't just keep saying, you know, the meters per second squared is we say the acceleration is and this is the unit it's measured in. We say the charge and this is the unit that it's measured in. So what that means then is we're going to take Q, the amount of charge, in this case one coulomb, and we're going to multiply it by E, the electric field strength, and that should leave us in terms of force. So remember, the units here, newtons for every coulomb, so this is how many newtons of force at this point we get for every coulomb of charge we bring in here, and this is the size okay, of the charge that we put in here. So it's a very similar concept to gravity, right? If we just switch gears again and go back to gravity for a second, because I think it's we're, we're more used to dealing with gravity. You know, if I have my mass here, I expect there to be 9.8, right? But what happens if I bring my mass like way up above Earth, like really far away? Would we still expect it to be 9.8 really far away from Earth? No, because the gravitational field decreases the farther away you get. So maybe you're out here and you're only at like 8 meters per second squared or 8 newtons for every kilogram, right? And the same is true with this. We have to distinguish a very specific point in space where that field is whatever strength it is. And if we move away, okay, it's going to weaken. And if we move closer, it's going to get stronger. So we measure electric fields with the test charges, and the units of electric field strength are newtons per coulomb. Just like in gravity, it's newtons per kilogram. So I'm just going to define these terms, E, or more properly, just a big E, okay, is electric field strength. Now, do you think that this is a vector value? Is electric field strength a vector? Does it have a direction? It doesn't have a direction? What if I change this to from being a positive charge to a negative one? What would happen? It would flip. It would point the other way. So do you think it's a vector value? Absolutely. It has a direction, right? This electric field, right, ba is based on what a positive test charge would do. So at this point, this electric field points to the right. Okay. If I were to test over here, it would point, oops, sorry, this points to the left. Over here, it would point to the right. Okay. Over here it would point up. Over here it would point it would point down. Okay. So the field 
is inclusive of direction. So this is a vector, vector value, okay, and it's measured in how many newtons I get for every coulomb of charge I put in that field, okay? Q, this is charge, amount of charge in coulombs. And this is Fe. This is electrical or electric force coming from either the attraction between um, opposite charges or the repulsion of like charges. Okay, and the only difference that the, the strength doesn't change. The strength wouldn't change if I flipped the value of the charge. Just the direction would flip. Okay, so I'm just going to leave you with like a little homework problem. At a point near a positive recharged sphere, a 0 0.05 Coulomb test charge, and that's positive. We'll put a little positive sign, although you don't technically need to just assume it's positive if there, if there isn't a sign, but anyway. A positive 0 0.05 Coulomb test charge experiences a 100 Newton force to the right. Okay, is the main charge plus or minus, based on this picture, and B, find E, the field strength, and C, Find E at twice the distance. Actually, it's not fine. I'm going to say just, you know, estimate it. Okay? All right, let's quickly solve this. All right, so if a positive test charge feels a rightward force, we must have a field that points to the right at that direction. And therefore, this thing must be positively charged. Okay, so that's the first thing. Check. Positively charged. Find E. Well, the, the units of E, or E, is newtons per coulomb. So what you should be doing here is you should rearrange the little formula we had before to look like this. E is force for a given amount of charge. How much force do I get per coulomb? Well, I get 100 newtons when there's only 0 0.05 coulombs there. So, well, 5 into 100 is 20. 200, 2,000. So this field strength is 2,000 newtons for every coulomb at whatever point we're measuring. Okay? And we also saw that field strength drops off at a square to the distance that we move away. So if we doubled the distance, we should get one quarter field strength. So one quarter of 2,000 should be... Brooklyn Fisher, Kristen Eichel, Madison Russo, Brooklyn Vermeulen to the office, please. And we're done.